Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, hello, Art. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. Art, it's a new week, a new day. Uh, what's, what's new with you? Well, first of all, I can't start the day without saying hello, John. So how, well, John, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, even, even though Thursday is our release day for this, this is Monday. So how was your weekend, John? Uh, my weekend was filled with joy and oh. working in the garden. Wonderful. And uh, anything at, at the stables? Uh, no, the stables are still full of manure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that wasn't but, your job this weekend. That wasn't my job. But the garden now has Brussels sprouts and peas and cabbage and rogula and a couple of other things uh, for, for the winter. That's our winter crop. How do you grow rogula? Okay, are they chocolate rogula? Not they... rogula, arugula. Oh, arugula. I'm sorry. Arugula, okay. <laughs> you can take the you can take the boy out of New York, but you can't take the New yeah, York that's out. True. <laughs> out of the boy. I'd much rather be able to grow rugula, believe me. But you know, it's you can't eat it the same way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what happened to you? So, so I, well, I had some pre weekend stuff, but it's not that interesting. It, it had to do with with mechanical stuff. But over the weekend, uh, uh, my son and daughter in law. We're doing a major renovation of a house. And so we took the kids, uh, five and eight years old, uh, to our house on Friday and, uh, and a sleepover until Saturday, uh, till Saturday late. So we had almost two full days. And on Friday, uh, we were teacher aides for their online classes. So they brought their Chromebooks over here and they got onto our internet and they went to a day of school. And it's not the first time we normally watch them at their house from time to time. So we just had a great time. My grandson is learning how to play chess very well. And well, I, I can't suggest that he almost beat me, but he gave me a run for my money. And uh, I'm okay, I'm okay. Uh, but he's, he's gonna beat me probably before he's 12. There's no question sure. about it. And- uh, It's only the, a matter of time, yeah. Uh, so that's Madden and then the little one, Lane, uh, uh, she just, it is a bug in a rug and having fun and doing gardening. She helped me plant, we plant um, bamboo plants from uh, uh, something that we got them in into a nice little stone uh, garden in a bowl that uh, I'm putting together for a friend of mine. So, uh, well, I had a great weekend. Good. So. You don't want to tell me about, you don't want to tell me about your car? <clears throat> well. Come on, I know all about it. Okay, all about it. So on Thursday, uh, I like I like my cars to hang around, and uh, I have a Honda Pilot that's got about two hundred thousand miles on it, and we put some repairs into it. But it's a great car, and um, I'm thinking about over the next year getting a new one. And I pulled out of a parking lot, and all of a sudden I hear uh, like a metal spaghetti grinding away. I said, oh, "Okay, so it must be the transmission." Uh, but I so I was stuck in the middle of traffic. If anybody knows Bishop Viejo, Alicia Parkway, and uh, <clears throat> Geronimo uh, Avenue. And I was in one and a half lanes, and it was rush hour. I just finished doing some shopping and had some perishables in the car. And all of a sudden, I had absolutely no power. Uh, I'm sitting in the middle of traffic. I throw on my flashing lights uh, and get out and start directing traffic around because somebody was going to come around the corner and uh, smack into it and they'd get hurt and I'd get hurt. Sure. And even though it might be their fault, it, you know, so I just want to be there to wave people off. And uh, as uh, not surprising at all, a lot of people asked if they could come out and help, but I didn't want them trying to push a car in traffic or anything. Uh, but a lot of Marines stopped and they almost uh, uh, muscled me to say, no, we're going to help you do this. I said, no, you're not. Uh, you're not going to get hurt. And then one really gigantic guy driving a humongous truck uh, stopped his vehicle behind me, put on his flashes. Nobody was going through him. It was like a cement truck that size. And uh, he said, I know how to do this stuff. And he was, you know, he weighed what we weigh plus 50%. And uh, he looked like he could have lifted the car and moved it. So I let him do that. And he got me out of traffic and Linda came, picked up the stuff. But I figured the car is ready for the junk. Triple A came, 
he took me over to my station, and my mechanic said, I bet it's not, not a real major repair. I said, what are you talking about? Listen to it. Don't worry about it. He went, he checked the oil, and he checked the transmission fluid, and he says, it, you probably broke an axle, and it's a front-wheel drive. And I said, well, that doesn't sound very exciting. He's really, it's not expensive. It's no labor. Okay, once you get the parts, it's done. And this is now by 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, because I had shopped during senior hour. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, Linda drove me home, and I get a call at 11 o'clock, done. <laughs> done. Uh, and uh, it, it, it drives great. I'm probably going to trade it in and, and, and get a newer vehicle now, but uh, just because 200,000 miles, it doesn't owe me anything. So that was, uh, if you were talking about that, okay, um, I, that was that was where I was going because when you told me that story. No, 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 no. I can't. Me... I can't stop yet. I can't stop yet. So oh, okay. if you're anywhere in the Mission Viejo area and you need a great mechanic, <laughs> an honest mechanic, Horacio Montaya. Oh, I thought you were going to try to sell me okay, the car. Uh, call me. Uh, contact me. Email me, and uh, um, uh, he'll steer you right. He just he he could have said it. You know, it was a transmission. I wouldn't have fixed it, but you know. He could have said it was one of those things that if it were five years ago, you know, I, I have No, he said, this is what it is. I really, it's not a big deal. There's not a lot of labor. And um, uh, I let him go ahead and fix it. Uh, so he's great at diagnosing these things and, and treating you right. So if uh, you need a good mechanic and you're in the Mission Viejo area, anywhere within 50 miles, Rossio, contact me. Uh, okay, John, now, now I'm throwing it. Wait, I'm throwing it so back to you. So I got three things no, out of this. Wait. I got three things. I'm Number one back is to you. you've got a. Was I supposed to catch that? Is that what yeah. you, you, you? Oh, let me. Oh, wrong way. Oh, <laughs> right. oh I got it. Good. Okay. <laughs> hey, if, if you don't start getting going with this thing, I'm going to start pitching uh, Don, uh, uh, Bill Drysdale, who does my artwork. Okay, again. Oh, man. <laughs> so where where are we going with this, John? Well, what I got out of your story was three things. Number uh -huh. one is call you for a good mechanic if I'm ever in Mission good. Viejo, good. Southern California. Uh -huh. Since this goes worldwide, I don't think you're going to get a lot of calls. Uh -huh. Number two, if I'm in the market for a 14-year-old Honda Pilot, call you. Yeah. It's over 200,000 miles, but it's got a new front axle. Right. And number three... I think what I got out of this whole thing was that cars are so necessary for us. We, they, they are, there's so many things in our life now that are like a, a necessary item. We can't live without them. And, and once upon a time, they weren't important. But today, th they're our lifeblood. So, car think about this you and i grew up in in new york right we walked to the grocery store our parents walked to the grocery store right my, today my, you have to, and when my mother granted, went she, she used a shopping cart you know one of those uh, sure. uh metal things that on two I remember, wheels you remember i that? remember them well right. yeah and uh and i remember carrying groceries for yeah from bohax they, from bohax yeah bohax <laughs> i love it i i, I, I we went from Bohack to Dyke Shepwell. Wow, you but you lived in a fancy neighborhood. <laughs> that was after Dyche merged with Shopwell, because I remember the old Dyche, Dyche, whatever it is with the Crystal Dairies. Uh -huh. Anyway, New York stuff. Um, today, of course, we're in Southern California, where you can't walk to anything; you have to drive. Mm -hmm. But once upon a time, I think Southern California was that way too. People didn't, they didn't spread out. There was no San Fernando Valley filled with uh, homes, right? Particularly when we were kids. People lived in or close to some kind of shopping and transport buses and things like that. Today, the car is a ubiquitous necessity. It, it's, you know what? It's also like the telephone. Although I have to, I have to admit that um, for, before the pandemic, and people were afraid to get into somebody else's car. In a lot of cases, people were dumping their car where they didn't use them very often and getting Uber or Lyft, particularly in cities. I know in San Francisco, uh, I have a daughter who lives there, 
And while well, she has a car because uh, she goes off on long weekends to uh, Marin County and, and other places, uh, but only maybe uh, uh, once or twice a month, but she has a car for those purposes. Uh, but she used Lyft and uh, Uber all over the place, and they had other yeah. competitions. So I guess it depends on where you were. Uh, but you're right. Uh, yeah. Where did, now, when you grew up, you were in lower upstate New York, or were you in the Bronx at the time? No, we we were in Webster County. Oh, you were, but still. Yeah. Uh, so and that's the suburbs. So you know we had a car. Right. But quite frankly, you didn't use it to go very many places. You used it to, to go to work. Right, but could you, you know? could you walk into town to see a movie? Were you close enough to do that? Sure. I I we would walk. It was I have to guess because I don't remember. Maybe it was two miles mm -hmm. from our house to Main Street. You know. That's yeah, everything. And for so us. we could. Yeah, so so that wasn't. A, I mean, it was a a trek, but it was no big deal. Kids mm -hmm. would walk to and from school two or three miles, right. and it's not a big deal. Um, you could take the bus if you wanted to, but you didn't have now, to. Now, unlike me, when you walked to school both both ways, it was uphill both ways, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, just check it. And we had no legs. Right. We had to do it in the snow. In yeah, the, I, in I, the I, snow. I, the snow was the important yeah. part. Yeah. But what, what I was getting at, Art, was was there are so many things that. Uh, we grew up with that were luxuries mm. and they they weren't necessities like at least not the way they are today right. and I think first of all of uh, of the telephone mm -hmm. um, the telephone we, we everybody had a landline at well not, actually I remember people who didn't have a phone I remember but, our first line well, I don't remember the whole number but it was like fa7 because we, yeah. we were in a, a town called for Rockway for a while and it was a party line. So you had yes. to, it had to ring once or twice for you to know whether or not to even pick it up. My, <laughs> it my didn't grandmother ring that, had a party line. Right, and it, didn't, yeah. it didn't ring that often because it was expensive for anybody outside your area to call you uh, yep. and to even own a phone. Oh, and, and you can remember if you needed to call somebody on the other side of town, you had to call long distance. Now, right. I have long distance, mm -hmm. right? Today, you just dial the number. Right. It's a different area code. That's all. But the telephones are now ubiquitous. People and and their personal cell phones. We've gotten rid of the landlines, and now we have personal cell phones. Everybody's got a cell phone. Right. It seems maybe not, but it seems that way. Actually, um, ubiquitous throughout the world. And not only is it a cell phone, but it's a computer. It's a game yep. station. It's a television. Yep. It's a sure. email. It's it's got more power than the first. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 room filled uh, computers. So uh, yeah. you're right. Well, think think about this too. You mentioned uh, computers before. Uh, before computers, there were there was no there was an abacus. You know, there was a, a adding machine. Well, I was a little later. I, I was born a little bit after the abacus, but abacus. Yeah. No, I, I don't think you, so. you studied accounting. You knew. Uh, you had your own. <laughs> I abacus. knew what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so and and television. You told me you you were the family with the first television on the block. Because we I was homebound for a couple of years, we got the first TV on the block, and right. we got it was in the uh, early fifties. I remember one of the things. I first of all I was a great fan of uh, uh, Ernie Kovacs and his early Ivo Fraternal and Watching Society Morning Show. I yeah. watched all the uh, uh, soap operas, but I remember the most dramatic thing was that they they would plunk me down in front of the TV when I didn't have a home teacher. And I uh, watch whatever came on Channel Two, the news, Cronkite, whatever it was in the morning. And there was a news flash that the Korean War was over. Oh. I, I remember that distinctly uh, yeah. as being a news flash. And I called my my mother, and it was probably during a weekday or something. And uh, I, I just thought it was the most amazing thing that here we heard about something which I didn't know that much about, but there was another war. And yeah. that it was finally over. So I, I sort of remember that. But you're right. Uh, we didn't even have a color TV. I remember we had, had a, a friend of the block who got the first color sure. TV after I was getting around a bit. And it, we yeah. were amazed. Yeah, I remember our first color TV was about, the screen was about that big. It was a, a Sony Trinitron. <laughs> cost a fortune. Right. And it was the same size, which years later, it was the same size as the computer screen on the little Mac. The mm. little uh, uh, Macintosh uh, Apple right. uh, thing, and it was it was also the same size as the original TV, 
in my grandmother's house. That was black and white. That was black and white. Right. Yeah. So, you know, whatever that size was, it seemed to be a really uh, a popular size for things. But, you know, you mentioned TV and, and uh, not having color TV. Nobody had a remote. They plunked you down and left you in front of Channel 2 because you'd have to get up, and you couldn't get up to go change the channel. That's right. That's why and so if it was CBS, you only watch Channel 2. If it was CBS, I even remember, I'm not going to sing the theme song from Evans, but if you're not Evans, you're not living. But it talked to, oh, CBS, oh, CBS, your trademark is a blood shot eye. I'm not going to do the rest of it, but... Please don't. <laughs> but I couldn't turn that off. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, think about all those things that um, that we had that were not necessities. They were conveniences. Well, talk about like telephone. Talk, talk like about telephone. the. Com- we didn't need to call people all the time. We didn't need to talk to people. We'd leave the house. We didn't need to make a phone call. And you know, maybe you needed to call home. You'd find a phone booth plunk in a a dime, and you'd call home. Big deal. Oh, well, think right? about think about the personal computer, which is ubiquitous now. And yep. uh, the, probably the first uh, application that most people ever use on it was you've got mail from, yes. from AOL. Email. And email. Remember the post office? Yeah. Now uh, they're now they're part of election central. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> they don't deliver mail. They deliver votes. No. That's, that's, well, that, and that talks about something else about uh, going shopping. We'll get to that in a moment. But now the uh, the, the computer, whether it be a desktop. I, you and I happen to have one, but we also have, uh, uh, what do we have? Uh, uh, we have our, yeah. our cell phones. And yep. this That's is a computer. This, sure. is, this is how, uh, when I'm not in the house, I get my email. Uh, we're putting together uh, our pilot show and we can keep in touch by text and, and messages. Look at, look at what we're doing on a computer now. We're talking to each other. Right. We're doing a TV. In essence, we're doing a TV show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so I, I, all these things either didn't exist or they were luxuries. TV was a luxury. Right. Uh, now it's ubiquitous. It, it, call it TV, call it the internet, call it uh, <laughs> YouTube, call it whatever it is. Right. It's everywhere. You can't live without it. So, so what's the point? <laughs> the point is there's something, there's something on the horizon. I don't know what it is, which today we consider – a luxury. It's mm-hmm. not a necessity. But it's going to become so ubiquitous that it will be a necessity. And that's in 10 years. Things are happening much faster now. Right. Right. So what is it? I don't know what it is. I can't think of it right now, but something out there is uh, I don't know. Uh, is a luxury that soon will become a necessity. Yeah. I, I don't know what it could be. Uh, I think the last really big thing that uh, became a necessity was uh, 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 e-commerce, uh, particularly uh, in, in the in the right. form of uh, uh, Amazon, where uh, uh, quite frankly there are a lot of things, except for maybe during the pandemic, that if you need a hard drive, a new backup hard drive, you could call two in the afternoon, and at three thirty it was on your doorstep. I mean yeah. that. I mean that's uh, they figured out enough things that people needed all the time, but in most cases within a day or two. You have almost anything from uh, Amazon, or uh, you can get custom-made clothing from Stitch and Fit or something like that. Stitch and sure. Well, think Stitch think about Fitch. this. What's old again, what's old is new again, or new again is old again, or whatever, because Amazon is mail order. It's the Sears Roebuck catalog on right. steroids. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, you know, that Sears Roebuck catalog was developed in, what, 1860 or something, 1870? I don't know when. And they, they sold everything from clothing to tools to homes. You could buy a whole house from Sears Roebuck. Mm-hmm. They'd ship it to you and you can build your house. Right. And you can build it I'm, and you can build it with craftsman tools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now Amazon is pretty much the same thing. I, they're not selling houses, but they're uh, you know they, what? I'm gonna take I, I bet I bet they are. And when we finish today, I'm gonna get uh, 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 offline and take a look at it. But talking about being finished today. Uh, yes, I the, can see my the, I can see my picture squeezing down. I think that means we're finished. Right, I think the internet it, gods have said goodbye. Right. You, I need a break. So anyway, I think it's been a, a great conversation. Thanks for uh, thinking about it, John. Uh, and um, uh, maybe our audience can uh, give us some things that we've forgotten about. Find out, A, when was the first year's catalog actually really produced? 
We want to know that. Please send us a message about that. But B, what do you have today, which is now a necessity, that just maybe within the last 20 years or 10 years was uh, a luxury? So, uh, John, anything else? Uh, yes, I want to remind everybody to call you if they need a Honda Pilot, a 14-year-old Honda Pilot. With a new front axle. With um, Yes. <laughs> Brand new. Okay. Oh, hey, look, my picture's back. Low mileage. Yeah. Okay, that's, anyway, that's it's, a, it's time to say goodbye. That, I can take it. That's great while you're ahead. Yeah. <laughs> ahead, ahead. Ahead. Well, I'm ahead. Anyway, until next time, uh, John, always great to talk to you. And to our audience, um, great to speak with you. Thank you. Good. We hope to hear from you. And uh, please subscribe. Subscribe to what? Celebrating Act Two on YouTube. Ah, uh, yes. What a wise choice. Yes. See you soon, everybody. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.